For emergency medicine physicians, one of the scariest emergencies we see is lack of an airway. When I saw her, I knew we better do something and do it quick because she was going down fast. In March 2016, Lorraine Besson went to the hospital for what was supposed to be a low-risk spinal fusion surgery. Her sister-in-law, Angela, remembers the day. I was worried about Lorraine. It was a serious surgery where they had to go in, you know, from the front to work on her back. And uh, it seemed to go okay. And then it was then when she was at home later, you know, that, that uh, things kind of went south. Two days later, while at home recovering, Lorraine struggled to breathe. She was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Soon after, her brother Neil got a phone call with terrible news. One of uh, her children saw her come out of the ambulance at the hospital, and she said that she totally looked lifeless. That was very alarming to hear, so I knew it was a critical situation. When we got the first call, all I could do was pray. Just ask for God's intercession, you know, to intervene on this situation, because I knew it was really, really serious. And I honestly didn't know if she was going to make it at that point. In the emergency room, Dr. Laura White knew something was blocking Lorraine's airway yet was unable to insert a breathing tube due to the swelling in Lorraine's neck. It was quite obvious to all of us that she needed to be intubated. I looked at her neck and I just had this sense of foreboding that, that told me just this is not an option. This is not an, a viable option to get an airway on this patient. We were able to keep her oxygenated while we were waiting for anesthesia to get there and I chose to do that rather than make an incision in her neck. The anesthesiologist arrived and was soon able to establish an airway. They then found the source of Lorraine's swelling, stemming from her previous surgery. She had a nick in her thyroid artery, and the blood was slowly leaking out of that artery into her neck. Had we put an incision in her throat anteriorly to put a breathing tube in, she quite frankly could have bled to death right there on the table. Lorraine was moved to the ICU on a ventilator in a drug-induced coma. Her family continued to pray. We kind of came in when we were given a chance to and prayed with Lorraine there in the room in the ICU. It was frightening to see her lying on her back like that. After 10 days, Lorraine began breathing on her own. Her family was thankful that she was alive yet concerned that she may have suffered brain damage due to the lack of oxygen. I thought for sure without oxygen for that long, she was gonna have severe um, damage, you know, to her cognitive functioning. She was sent to rehab to continue her recovery. Dr. Martin Setliff was the attending physician. She was having difficulty the first few days even recalling um, what, what she did even the previous hour. And she also had a mild component of an oxic brain injury, which indicates that in the period of time that her airway was blocked, uh, she was unable to get adequate blood flow to her brain. I did have concerns that given the nature of her injury and the severity of it, that her time on our unit could be anywhere from three to four weeks possibly. She fortunately was able to undermine my <laughs> original estimation and she got out of the rehab unit within about 13 days. Lorraine made a full recovery. She is grateful for the prayers and miracles that kept her alive every step of the way. I know that Jesus is alive and well today and that he does still do miracles. I'm, I'm proof of that. I should not be sitting here telling you my story. It was only through the intervention of God. He had his hand on it from the beginning to the end, from the ambulance all the way to the surgery where um, I was then able to breathe and not in danger. I am a firm believer in if God is ready for you, you will go. And if God is not ready for you, you aren't going anywhere. And I've seen this happen time and time again. I've had people walk into my ER and six hours later, they're on a vent, deathly ill and die. I've had them come like Miss Besson, critically ill, on death's door, and end up walking out of the hospital two weeks later. And all of this, physicians play a role in 
but the ultimate decider of who survives and who does not is God. It's been five years since this happened, and I still will ask people, strangers, would you like to hear my miracle story? And I can't tell you how many times I've told them my story, and then they say, thank you so much for telling me your story. I needed to hear that today. Wow, yay God. Look at what God did in Lorraine's life. As I was watching that piece, I'm reminded of a scripture in the Old Testament. And it says, what the enemy meant for evil, God intended for good and the saving of many lives. Lorraine is now sharing her testimony, how she overcome, she overcame death. She was on death's door. And because the power of prayer, the power in believing in the name of Yeshua, our Savior, by the power of God, she is alive and well today. I just want to encourage you, wherever you're at right now, if you're desperately seeking God for an answer, surrender that to the Lord today. Fully put your hope and faith and trust in him. You heard what that physician said. God is the one in control. He is in control of you and your life, and he's got a bright hope and a bright future for you. Just receive it today. Maybe your future is healing, and we believe that it is healing because we believe what the word says. It is by the stripes of Jesus Christ that we are healed because of Christ's death and resurrection. Not only are we forgiven of our sins, but we can claim healing from any iniquity, any infirmity that tries to come our way. So receive that today, friends. And Gordon and I are gonna pray for you and your needs. So where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. But before we do, we wanna share some more amazing miracle testimonies of what God is doing in the lives of people today. So this is from Natalie on Facebook. She commented and said, one evening I was laying on my couch, squeezing my head with both hands. I was watching the show when Gordon prayed. He said that there was a woman lying on a couch, squeezing her head, and that she gets terrible migraine headaches, that she was being healed right at that moment. I claimed that word for myself and called out to God. The next day, my migraine was gone, and I've never dealt with those migraines again. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, here's a remarkable miracle. A viewer on YouTube, I was diagnosed with MS a few years ago. I was watching Gordon and Ashley pray during the live prayer on YouTube. I heard Ashley say, those that are struggling with any autoimmune diseases, the Lord is healing that right now. I claimed that word and declared healing over my body. I recently went to the doctor and there were no new lesions on my brain. I believe that I am totally healed. Amen. And hallelujah, MS, that's wonderful news. That's what a wonderful miracle. God is a miracle working God. He loves to heal his children. What good father wouldn't love to heal his children? That's his will. When you get his will lined up with your prayer, you know that he hears and you know that he answers. So let the kingdom of heaven come near to you. Let his will be done in your body. When you see heaven, you see his will. There's nobody sick in heaven. There's nobody having any kind of problem, any kind of pain, any kind of infirmity. It's not allowed in heaven. So let's have his will be done in your body right now. Yes. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you believing, believing in the finished work of the cross. You declared for all eternity it is finished. You have conquered sin and death. You have conquered disease, infirmity, you bore it all so that we wouldn't have to bear it. So if you have carried it away, we release it now from our bodies. We claim your healing over us. We command healing now. And we say to ourselves out loud, be healed 
and be made whole in Jesus' name. There's someone you're praying for your knees. You have uh, excruciating pain. You've been doing some work around the house, and God is, uh, is just healing both those knees right now. The pain is leaving, the inflammation is swelling, leaving you right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, I believe uh, several people are watching, and when you heard that testimony of active lesions, there being no active lesions from MS, I believe people are watching either with MS or another autoimmune disease and even cancer. You've seen scans where there's lesions, cancerous tumors on your brain. I believe the Lord is healing all of that. Whoever this is for, just claim it, receive it right now in Jesus name. I believe that you're gonna go back and get another scan and there will be no active lesions, no cancerous tumors, no lesions from uh, MS or any type of disease or infirmity in Jesus name. Amen. There's someone you have extreme uh, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis in both hands, but where it really is a problem is uh, the last two fingers on your right hand. It's literally, it's immovable. The pain is just excruciating for you. God is healing that. As I said that, your pain just left your hand. It's going away right now. Do what you couldn't do before. Move your fingers like you couldn't before. Realize God's touched you and he's healed you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share in your good report. A lot of different ways you can do that, but best way, call us. 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.